Amen. Amen. Without God, I could do nothing. Amen. John, the third chapter in the fifth verse. Said so Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. And he marveled not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Listen, and thou heareth the sound thereof, but canst not tell where it comes from, and whether it goes, and where it comes from. Amen. Sometimes he blow a cool breeze into your household. And sometimes you may hear furniture pop in the house creep. I don't say that's no spirit. And I don't say it's no devil. Because I say the devil is not allowed in here. This is God's territory where I live. And if it's not the spirit of the Lord, you got to go. If you're not the spirit of the Lord, don't make no sound in here. Somebody say amen. I heard a great prophet say that he was running a revival. And the devil was after him. And in the hotel room, when he walked in the hotel room, he called his name out and took the bed that he was in and moved it across the room. And he said, I know who you are, and I'm trying to sleep. Put my bed back in the name of Jesus. And the devil had to put his bed back. A lot of people don't believe it because they don't have the faith to know that God moves mountains. I want to tell you today that God moves mountains. I want to tell you today that you can, he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you, and he'll never let you down. All you have to do is depend on him and believe on him and believe that he diligently receives all rewards he diligently seek. I'm paraphrasing right now because when I get excited, I paraphrase. But I'm excited about somebody great. Somebody bigger than me. Songwriter said, who made the mountain? Who made the sea? Who made the valleys and who made the trees? It was somebody bigger than you and I. It's somebody bigger today than you and I. It's someone bigger today than you and I. It's somebody else out there in operation. The White House is not in operation by itself. The armed force is not in operation by itself. God is in operation. Anybody still here? Hallelujah! I heard a soldier testify that he was on the front line. And everybody was shot down all around him. And he said, a great big, I'm speaking grammar now, but a huge soldier came and stood in front of him with a great weapon and he wiped that front line out that was coming against him and it was just like some of the other stories that you've heard when it was, excitement was all over and he looked around to think this big soldier was no soldier we know who that great soldier was we know who that great soldier was that stood in front of the little soldier and won that war amen and they gave Joe MacArthur the credit, but it was somebody bigger than Joe MacArthur. It's somebody bigger in operation out there for you. It's somebody bigger in operation for you today. It's somebody with love, peace, happiness, and kindness in operation. He's a soon coming king. Yes, Lord. He's a soon coming king. He will not leave you and not say you and not let you down. He'll be right there when you call on him. He said, call on me and I will answer thee and show you. Great and mighty things, which you know if not. Young people think they know everything. Some of them you can't tell nothing. Some of the old ones too. They say it's old fools and young fools. Can't tell them nothing. Anything you start to tell them, you get halfway through the sin. I know that. They know it all. 
I had a dress shop in Pomona, and I had hired this lady to uh, to uh, sew for me. And every time she'd mess up, she called me over. She said, "Sister, show me one more time." And I would show her how to sew. And she said, "Don't show me now. I know everything. Don't show me no more." And then when she gets stuck again, cause she know I didn't want no messed up garments, she said, "Come show me one more time." And I would show her again. And then she said, nah, don't tell me no more. I know everything. Don't tell me. I know now. I know everything. And do you know we're like that? God give us chance after chance after chance. No weapon formed after against chance. your people shall prosper. No weapon and formed and against your children, hallelujah, shall prosper. Father, we ask you to usher in your, 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 your healing angels right now this morning. Father, we ask you to send in your listening angels that would enhance anything that would come up against our ears, that would come up against our minds, so that we would not be able to receive the word. We ask you to send those angels in right now, God. We ask you to take complete charge over your children here today, Father, and even in radio and TV land, take charge over your children right now and let them know that it's God's time. What time is it? It's God's time. It's time for us to not let the world supersede God's word and God's Bible and, and let the internet and, and, the, and the cell phones and everything that's out there, the uh, sophisticated uh, computer games and, and, and basketball and football and tennis and sports and everything else overpower God's word. Somebody need to say amen. We're living in a dying world here. We're in a world right now where people do not reverence God. It used to be when a person wouldn't smoke around a pastor or, or drink around a pastor. Now they'll keep the beer bottle over on the pastor. They used to jump up and give them the seats to pastors and old women and on the uh, bus or on the L or on the plane or wherever you travel. Now they're racing, scoot under you and, and beat you to the sea. Somebody say, praise God. But I want you to know this morning that God is still in charge. Hell is not in charge. God is in charge. Heaven ain't in no trouble. I don't care where the gas prices are. I don't care who's in the White House. God is in the right house. And he's not in charge. He's not in charge of me, hallelujah. I got up with my own mind this morning. I got up and put my own clothes on this morning with the strength of God. And I'm so glad about it. Are you glad about it? I'm so glad about it. I thank God for the great fathers. Even here on earth and in the biblical days. Amen. I knew a great father named Isaac, praise God. I knew a great father named Abraham in the Bible. I knew a great father named Jacob in the Bible. Joseph. But none was greater than our father God. When God told Abraham to sacrifice his son, that was not a good father's day. Because he gave him the knife and gave him the directions where to go to take his son up to be slaughtered. That was not a good father's day. And Abraham was crazy about his son. But when he went up, Sarah watched him leave. And how do you think that mother felt when she seen her husband leaving with her only son? But God had a plan. He had a ram in the bush. When Abraham drew back the knife, the angel said, hold it, and stopped his hand. Amen. And then that Father's Day turned out all right. A lot of Father's Day days do not turn out so good when you don't have Jesus in it. Amen. When you don't have God in it. Amen. Everything they say is good if God is in it. Amen. 
But if God is not in it, it's trouble in it. Is anybody still here with me? Let me uh, look at a, a verse or two here about Abraham, about uh, Isaac. Amen. Isaac had two sons. I didn't get you. And his two sons was Jacob and Esau. But Isaac's favorite son was Jacob, was Esau, and the mother's son was Jacob. But in order to fill the role that God wanted Jacob to fill, he had to steal the blessing. Amen. And Esau hated Jacob because of that. And we talked about on last week, sometimes people hate for nothing. He said, what are you mad about? I don't know, but I'm mad. What are you hating about? I don't know, but I'm hating. Amen? But he knew what he was hating about. But on the other hand, when Jacob raised his sons, he had 12 sons. They call it the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. His favorite son, praise God, was Joseph. Because Joseph was the first son of his wife that he loved so dear. And he made him a coat of many colors. He was being a good father to one of his sons. And the rest of the sons hated it because he had that coat of many colors. And God began to send dreams and visions in to Joseph. And when he would go to tell his brothers and his father about his dreams and visions, they were jealous. Especially the sons. And they said, so you're trying to even up with God? You're trying to rule yourself over us? He said, no, I'm just telling my dreams. Sometimes you can't tell a good dreams and visions to someone else. Amen. What y'all call it, haters. You got a good dream, sometimes you just have to keep it to yourself. You got a good vision, sometimes you just have to keep it to yourself because you'll wonder, well, why God didn't give me that? What have you done for God lately? For him to give it to you. There was another good father that we know about was David. And David loved his son Absalom so much that, in fact, he was willing to let Absalom commit rape and anything else he wanted to do and not make him pay. You can't love your sons and daughters too much. You got to chastise them when they're wrong, and you got to let them know that was not cool. Amen? Amen. That was not right. And Absalom didn't stop there. He sought to take David's kingdom. He tried to take his own father's kingdom. And he had got an army of his own to assassinate his daddy. And David still didn't want to bring harm to him because you love your children, amen. amen. Someone can tell you your child is spoiled than a rotten apple. And you don't want to accept it. Why? Because parents keep making excuses. Amen. They figure they can talk to them. They can... Uh, do something else and witness to them or whatever, and they're going to do better. Amen? Amen? But that's just a good father. They talk about good mothers, but it's, it's some good fathers. Angela say she, her father is absolutely the greatest, and she's so proud of him. And that's a lot of people cannot say that, and they will not say it. No matter what your father and mother done, some of them say, look at the uh, clock and say, wow, I'm 18, it's time to go. And hit the road, Jack, and don't look back. Don't go back to cut the parents' yard or take out the trash or see can they go to the grocery store for them. I hope a lot of you out there listening, amen. Because you don't know the trouble that your parents gone through to get you up to that point where you're 18. You have to give up so much of your life. They should give every Mother's Day and Father's Day, they ought to give the, the parents the, the gift. Because you've given up so much of your life to get them up there, amen, amen. that 
uh, when they get up there, they should say, thank you, mother. Thank you, father. They made mistakes with you along the way. And they may be going to make some more mistakes. But just think if you didn't have them, amen. I know a mother said that you should have been on abortion. I should have dropped you in the toilet. And all that because the, the child was so corrupt. Amen. But no matter what you're dealing with, you need Jesus in it. You need to put Jesus first. You need to say, am I making a mistake today, God? Direct my path. Help me out with this. I'm having a problem today with this. Help me out. I know I'm wrong and I want to be right. Amen. Amen. Some more great fathers that along the way. But the greatest one of all, amen, we're going to turn over to John. The greatest father, praise God, of all, is our holy father. Amen. 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 Is our father in heaven. This is what it says on John, praise God, the third chapter. And look at the 16th verse. It says, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. For God sent not his son unto the world to be condemned. But that he, the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him not condemned. But he that believeth not on him is condemned already. Because he that he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And his, this is the condemnation that light is come unto the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. The devil will make the kids and sinners think church is born. But church, if you take the church out, I don't know what's going to happen to this world. Amen. Amen. Say, for everyone that doeth evil hateth light, neither come, come it to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. I think I gave the scripture. I'm not sure. I'm running. It's uh, John, the third chapter. And I'm reading the 21st verse. It said, but he that doeth Truth cometh to the light, that his deed may be made manifest that they are wroth in God. Jesus is the light. He is the light of the world. He's forever, ever shining in my soul. Jesus is the joy this morning. He's the joy of the world. You cannot have a joy without having God. You cannot have light without having God. Your day will not go right without God in it. Because everything you do, you're doing it. I'm doing it. Me, I, me, myself, and I, I'm doing it. And I've left God out. And that's what's wrong with the world today. Too many of us leaving God out, and we're trying to do it, and we're trying to carry the heavy load ourselves. A lot of people look at me and they say, how did you raise all those kids? What's your secret? Do you have a secret? Yes, I do. I could not have done it without God. Amen. Staying up praying late nights. Staying up laying hands on heads. Putting wet towels to faces and foreheads. And rubbing the chest with Vicks. Amen. Amen. Going in the nostrils and 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 pumping noses and, and pumping their mouth and washing diapers at 3 a.m. when I couldn't buy pampers. Somebody say amen. amen. You take that diaper and you give it a little shake and you put it in a little bleach water and there you go. You start from scratch. Amen. You start brand new again. I had a sister and I said, no, baby. I throw these away. She knew about disposables before they made disposables. 
She said, I can't watch that. <laughs> no, baby. She said, uh-uh, I can't watch that. They'll just have to do without one. But it takes a lot to raise your family. You have to be obedient to God first. Anybody here? Amen. You have to be obedient to God first. It's a hard task. It's people that go to sleep in their sleep and cross on over with, because they don't have the faith. Amen. Amen. I think God going to leave me here until I'm tired. Somebody say amen. amen. Because I believe in him. And I believe that he made heaven and earth and he's in the And I want to say... Come on out and fellowship with us at Christland World Harvest Church. Apostle A.M. Mosley, a true prophet of God who's been on the battlefield for the Lord for over 30 years. That's right. If you want to know more about the ministry, if you want to come out and fellowship, if you want to make a love offering or a donation, or just plain fellowship, pick up that phone and dial 951 867-7743. That number is for prayers, for donations, and for fellowship. And speaking of fellowship, you can catch us each and every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Thursday night Bible studies at 5 p.m. And listen to us live at KPRO Radio and KCAA Radio Monday through Friday, seven days a week. That's right. Christland World Harvest Church. If you don't have a church home, if you don't know the Lord, or you got some questions about the ministry, or you got questions in general, or you just need some good old fashioned prayer, somebody that can get a word through to the Lord, pick up that phone and dial 951 867 7743. Like us on Facebook. We are located at 22920. Alexandra Boulevard in the beautiful city of Moreno Valley. That's Alexandra and Frederick right down the street from the USA gas station. Again, that number is 951-867-7743. This is Bishop T. I want to see you there at church. Don't meet me there, but beat me there. Remember again, Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Thursday night Bible study, 5 p.m. And listen to us at KPRO Radio and KCAA AM Dial. Apostle A.M. Mosley. God bless you and we'll see you at Christland. Dear Lord, moving, moving in this, in this place. place. No, no weapon, weapon formed against, against your, your people, people shall prosper.